All right, as we continue our two-part series on flashcards and rethinking the way that we use them in the classroom, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Cardflow. Now, Cardflow is made by the same company who created Inkflow, which we already did in a previous video. So some of the functions of Cardflow are actually going to be very similar to that of Inkflow. So the majority of you will be very familiar with Cardflow and the way it works. And remember, as we are going through these, my suggestion to you is not to use all these apps but just to pick a few of these apps that you are comfortable with and start utilizing them in the classroom. And I promise the more that you use them, the more comfortable you will become. It will provide your students with meaningful technology in the classroom that will ultimately positively impact their learning. So let's go ahead and download CardFlow. Now just like most apps, there's a paid version and a free version. And to be honest with you again, for what we need, the free version will work just fine. So let's go ahead and download this. When you first open up CardFlow, it's going to give you the Welcome to CardFlow screen and it's going to tell you just the basic function. And then it's going to tell you to try CardFlow Plus and that's the paid version. So let's go ahead and look at the Welcome to CardFlow board. It's just going to give you a general idea on the basic function of CardFlow. So if you want to go ahead and read through that, that's fine. But we're going to go ahead and get started with this. So anytime that you want to start making new flashcards using CardFlow, you always want to hit the plus button in the upper left hand corner. And the cool thing about card flow is, is that you don't have to necessarily just use this to create flashcards. You can create storyboards, you can create to-do lists, you can use it to brainstorm, you can also use card flow just to make flashcards. Let's go ahead and get started with creating our first board. Now they call these boards instead of like a flashcard deck or something like that that we use with Quizlet. So you're going to hit the plus button in the upper left hand corner and you can actually rename this if you click on it. So I'm going to rename this. I'm just going to title it Board 1. If you click on the box, you can actually categorize it as miscellaneous, and you can actually edit these categories as well. And it just changes the color of the little icon next to the title. So you open up your first board. And if you want to scroll through the board, you just use two fingers. If you double tap, you can add a card. So in this tutorial, I'm going to make a few cards on the parts of speech. So I'm going to first double tap to add a card. Now if I want to edit this card, I can do that. But before I even go into editing it, I can check out the different templates of the cards by going up to the settings gear in the upper right hand corner. And I'm going to click on template. I can choose these different templates. So this is just a blank card. This one is like a grid. This one gives you an area to draw. And this one right here also will give you a checklist if you're going to do some sort of to-do list. If you're going to do some sort of storyboard, I suggest that you would use one of these templates that gives you the space to draw. But for today, I'm just going to use a regular note card. I can also change the color of the card to any color that I want using the gear function. Your students are going to like that more than I do. The plain white index card will work just fine for me. Now to edit this card, I'm going to click the text button in the upper right hand corner. And we'll say that the first card, I'm going to define what a noun is. I can change the text. I can change the size of the text. I can change the orientation of the text. If I want to star it after I'm done reviewing the flashcard, I can do that. Once I first edit the text and when I'm done with it, I just hit the check mark in the upper right hand corner. Now if I want to edit the back of that flashcard, I then I'm going to click in the bottom left hand corner, this button. I'm going to edit it right here. So a noun is a person, place, or thing. And an example is, I'm just going to say is an iPad. If I click in the upper left hand corner, it will go back to the board. Remember I can zoom in and zoom out if I reverse pinch or pinch. And I'm going to go ahead and add another card by double tapping. So we'll say that this one I'm going to add another card about a verb. I'm going to flip the card over. And a verb is a word that describes an action. Change the size of the text. Okay, so you're going to notice that this is a pretty simple app. I can also edit and I can draw on these cards if I'd like. You can add a drawing to this card. And if I can use that lasso tool like what we did with Inkflow, where I can then draw it really large and then I can actually shrink this down and make small drawings on these cards. Makes it really nice and it's a nice tool to be able to draw very detailed things using card flow. 
If I want to erase it, I can use the eraser. So now that I'm done with my two cards, as an example here, I want to show you a few different things. If I ever add a card and I want to delete it, I would just go back to the board, hold down the card, and I can either edit it or delete it. Now I can rearrange these anywhere that I want. But if I hold down and I use the lasso button, it will then select all of them. And in the bottom left hand corner, it will help you automatically orient your flashcards in these predetermined templates. So if I want them stacked, stacked and staggered a little bit, if I just want them side by side, I can do that. It will switch them. It's pretty easy for you to organize a large amount of index cards on this. Now this is great if you're creating a storyboard or if you have a certain section of words per chapter, something like that. So Cardflow is a very easy, simple to use app. You can draw on the cards, you can add text, you can orient them in different ways, you can change the color, it has different templates. There are, really are a lot of functions to Cardflow. So when you're done with a board, all your boards are organized in the upper left hand corner if you click those four boxes and it'll show you all your boards. If you want to add another one, you can do that. There are some different features in Cardflow Plus, but for what we want to use Cardflow for, the free version does just, a, just as good of a job. Okay, so that concludes Cardflow and our two-part series on rethinking flashcards. Some final thoughts here. Flashcards have been around for a long time. Teachers have encouraged students to use flashcards, but now with technology, we have a lot more options that we can use flashcards. I'm going to encourage you to use flashcards in your classroom and use one of these apps, and it will have a positive outcome and impact on your students. Quizlet, on one hand, has more games and options when it comes to making flashcards to help students learn, while Cardflow is just kind of like a traditional flashcard making app, but it really is cool with having the storyboard feature and to be able to organize those cards in a certain way. So I hope that all this information has been beneficial to you. I encourage you to keep pressing forward and using technology in the classroom. You can always email me at Corey at classroomtechmadesimple.com. This is Corey Knight with Classroom Tech Made Simple. We'll see you next video.